going to start this um, this record, and all of this will be put up on the YouTube channel so you can see it there. Um, and go back and go back and look at it because this is you. This is you and your relationship with God Himself. This has everything to do with what you're asking God for. Well, God is saying, if you draw nigh to me, then I'll draw nigh unto you. That means the, the first step is your action. That's because God already done his action. He said, I never leave you, nor forsake you. So he doesn't have to draw to you. You have to continuously focus on yourself drawing to him and making sure that the enemy doesn't trick you with things that's going on in your daily activities that's pulling you away from God. Because that's what he want to do. The devil want to pull you away from God so that he can now play his tricks and schemes in your life. So he can now send his demonic forces to go and work through these people and these people. Remember, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We're going to get into those scripture memorizations, you know, those exercises, because you got to have power to fight the devil. Mm -hmm. I need you to know, just saying, don't get me wrong, get behind me, ye devil. Yeah, that's strong and powerful. However, when I tell you no weapon formed against me shall prosper, when I, when I, when I tell you that, that when I ask that he hears me, when I seek, mm -hmm. I shall find, when I knock, the door will be opened unto me. When I can start to speak those things to myself, I can move what the enemy is trying to play on the inside of me for me not to start speaking on the outside based on what he's asking me to do because I'm a vessel of God, mm -hmm. right? So when when we when we go to when we go to looking at I'm gonna catch you up real quick, um, Felicia. Uh, we're talking about the importance of studying God's word correctly, um, and and doing that having the interpretation correct, knowing knowing who wrote it and who was being spoken to at the time that the scripture was written, um, and then operating in the right context, meaning that you know not only what the scripture is you're reading. But I always suggest that you go up a little and go down a little. Circulate that just like we would do a paragraph. Circulate that text and see what's coming from that text that goes with what I'm reading. Give me the full picture, right? And then, and then defining words um, from the biblical term versus what it means in our English language. Uh, those are the three key things in studying God's word correctly. Um, I'm actually going to do um, a video that's just, I'm going to go through some text and I'm actually going to show you how I study the word. I'm going to, I'm going to put the camera on me. I'm going to dig into some scriptures and we're going to walk through a uh, actual breakdown of a scripture. And this is basically what you do. If you put time in it, see, see God knew that when Jesus talked in parables, you remember the disciples used to ask him, why you talk like that? Nobody's going to understand you. He said, those that have ears will hear. Mm -hmm. Okay? So you got to have an ear for understanding. God wants to know that you are diligently seeking him to know what he's trying to say to you. You can't just, you know, uh, whamby-pamby and say, oh, yeah, God, uh, uh, I read your word. I know what you're saying. Because in, in the reality, it's, it's, it's something in depth. And I'm not saying go so deep that you deep sea diving in the word and coming up with all this miraculous stuff. Oh, this was revealed to me. Well, no, slow down. Don't do that. But what I do want you to do is understand that it's bigger than surface reading. It's not a novel. Okay. So we start talking about these spiritual gifts. What was Regina's? Uh, the yes. You ready? It is yeah. Giving, prophecy, okay. apostleship. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So isn't that amazing that the example came out uh, uh, of how giving works through a talent? Isn't that something? This seems like this is a, a Regina is a star tonight. That's what it is. That's what's going on. Um, because I think that you were one of two that had giving as a, a spiritual gift. And let me tell you something. Let, let me let me tell you, don't get weary of well doing. Okay, don't get weary of well doing. That's a scripture that you should repeat to yourself over and over again. And I say that to those who are in the place that feels the brokenhearted. You understand? Because the giving uh, is in uh, Donnie's a giver, right? And and you could get you could give these a giver. Felicia's a giver. All three, all, all of y'all are givers. And there's a lot of hurt that comes 
when you do stuff from the heart and somebody <laughs> just takes it as a gesture, yes. right? There's a lot of hurt that comes with that. You know, uh, many a nights that that you'll go and 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 have your 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 moment to let some tears go because somebody did they took your generosity in a place of just something you did versus connecting to the internal mechanism that made you do what you do. I have mm -hmm. my family live with Donnie, half mm -hmm. of them. They live with her. They ain't know, I don't think Donnie knew they was going to live with her, but they ended up there. <laughs> and, 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 and what I'm saying is she had a house that her door was open with love and you could come there on a Saturday and discover you were still there the following Thursday and she mm -hmm. would feed you every day and never ask you when you leave it. Right. You understand what I'm saying? She would, but 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 that's a heart of giving. Felicia mm -hmm. been, you know, she's been taking her, her, her time, her talent, her yes. income, sending gifts and things mm -hmm. all over the country for people to just say, I want to bless you. You, you understand? And so we do it in relationships. We do it in our family. We do it in marriages. We do it with our children. We do it at work. And a lot of times it goes unspoken that mm -hmm. you're operating from a spiritual giving gift that the Holy Spirit is implemented in you because you never knew it. You just say, that's just my genetic makeup. This is just who I am. This is just what I do. And Nothing we do is a coincidence. Nothing that we're after in life is a coincidence. So I want to encourage each and every last one of you to connect to these gifts. And so as, as I spoke of giving, it's so many ways that you can give. But the key of it is, is that your giving equals bringing people to Christ. Your giving equals bringing people to Christ. Because our overall goal is to connect with those who don't know Jesus the way we do. And even if we're just beginning, or even if we're making a commitment that this is our time, this is our season, in that very moment of fire, that's the moment that you connect to those that are still dry, those that are still cold, and say, hey, let my fire ignite you and come on this journey with me. Hey, come on the Bible study with me. Hey, come on and get on the prayer line with me. You Amen. know, if anything, anything going on in your life, come on, let God handle it. You know, yeah. it's little things that we put out to people. It doesn't have to be the big, oh, uh, you you need to go to church. And this and you need. No, no, no. Let me encourage you to come and try something different. You didn't try it your way all this time. Mm -hmm. Try something different. Because I promise you when you try this, you never have to try no more because you know it for yourself. God then brought me through. God then sustained me. He didn't uplift me, exalted me. But most of all, he didn't love me unconditionally through my foolishness. I got foolishness in it all the way. So when we get into these gifts, so when we talk of prophecy, have you ever said something to somebody that uh, came true later? <laughs> they came back to you and said, man, <laughs> That thing you said back there actually happened up here. <laughs> or you gave somebody some advice and they took that advice and it worked out for them. Mm -hmm. You know yeah. God was using you. You know God mm -hmm. was using you. At that very moment, God was actually activating you as the authority. Now, what people get confused with prophecy and prophet. There's no prophets because prophets... In the, in the biblical times, they had the authority of God to write the scriptures. There's no more scriptures being written. And nobody yeah. writing no scriptures. Anybody write a scripture in 2022, do not follow that scripture. That is not <laughs> biblical. Okay, let me say this. It's not biblical. So prophets are not active in these days, but prophecy, God uses each and every last one of us to uh, speak something into the lives of his people, to speak something over the lives of his people. Um, apostleship. I want I want to encourage, I'm, I'm, I'm so glad y'all are, are the first ones here tonight, because you know what? The core of the church has always been in the birth of Eve. Do you know that 90% of churches in this world are structured and uplifted on the foundations of the faithful women of the church. Mm -hmm. How many churches have you been to that was more men than women? Never. I'm going to tell you, never. That's a shame. Mm -hmm. That's a shame. It really is. 
but the reason why is because we have we still have a lot of pride we still have a lot of of self a lot of flesh in a way that we can't release because of what it makes us look like on the outside to the exterior world and until you find that sensitivity that Jesus Christ died on the cross for you and so that you wouldn't die so that you could live and live more abundantly then it it won't release and so what I want to tell you is that apostleship is about planning and executing ministry. The gift of apostleship, you have the gift of leadership, of creativity, of foundation. Um, and and if it, what's so ironic is everybody, uh, their test had apostleship in it. Almost everybody, except one. And I kept telling everybody before they took the test, and we're not riding on just the test because we're digging into what God's word says about the gifts, because these gifts, they change. As you may be in the gift of giving today, you might be in the gift of teaching in six months. Because the Holy Spirit distributes these gifts based on when you're ready to execute those gifts and our goal is to not those and not let those gifts lay dormant what was felicia's gift felicia um prophecy apostleship giving mm Okay, looks yeah. like he got disconnected. You on it? You on the Bible study? Yeah. All right, y'all got it. Y'all hear me? Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Cool. Don't go nowhere. If he tries to, if he tries to play a. Uh, uh, games with me, don't don't y'all go nowhere, okay? Y'all just stay right there. Don't y'all worry about it. I'm 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 throwing punches at him, you know. I'm a, you know I'm I'm a duck and weave, you know what I mean? I'm I'm a, I'm in the physical fitness on him, you know. Um, uh, Felicia, what was your gifts? Um, prophecy, apostleship, giving. Wow, that was the other one. That that was the other one. It was you and it was, giving was you and Regina. Yeah, that's what it was. I said it was one more. Yeah, you and Regina. Amen. Uh, apostleship and prophecy. And Regina's was giving apostleship, well, giving prophecy and apostleship, right? Mm -hmm. very, very exact mirror. Where you from, Regina? D.C. Uh, where you from, Felicia? Georgia. Let me tell you something about the God we serve. See, I want to make somebody excited tonight. Mm -hmm. See, somebody, somebody going to miss their blessing uh, 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 by not knowing how good God is. See, God, and if you look at Felicia and you look at the face expression on Regina right now, they look like twins. Mm -hmm. am, I telling, am I telling the truth? <laughs> Let me tell you something. Dig that smile right there. I'm yeah. trying to tell you what God is doing in the background. See, I can't describe it no more. That's the perfect example right there. Here go two people from two different places serving mm -hmm. the same God because he said that all of these gifts are of the same spirit. Mm -hmm. Look at that. In the order that it was. Yep. The order that it was for Regina was giving, prophecy, apostleship. Mm -hmm. In the order that it was given to Felicia was prophecy, apostleship, giving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And don't you know that they both on their jobs Amen. in the kingdom of God? Amen. Amen. And you think the devil ain't coming up against you? You think the devil don't want to wear you down? 
You think the devil don't want to keep you anxious, keep you in doubt, keep you in fear, keep you thinking that God won't do what God said he would do? You got the power to speak against a thing. If you don't put the word in your belly right now so that the word can come out your mouth and the meditations of your heart, put it here. That's where the word belongs. He said the body, he said the word became flesh. If we don't allow the word to become us, if we don't walk it when we talk it, it's one thing to give somebody a scripture, but it's another thing to see them living that scripture that you gave them. Yeah. See, yeah. I know that God can make a change. I know he can uplift you out of the ruts. He said, though I walk through the shadows of the valley of death, I fear no evil. Mm -mm. See, I'm trying to tell you how the word will, that look, man, I'm trying to tell you, but y'all gonna y'all gonna turn this into Sunday service. You're gonna skip Bible study, gonna come in here and let me get, get me some fire. Because I'm trying to tell you that God is working right now, and all you got to do is thank him in advance. Amen. All you got to do is praise him unconditionally, and you'll see the manifestations of it like. I see everything going so well. And, and, and you know what? Because you when, and when you look at Job chapter 42, 10, Job got double for his trouble when he prayed for his friends. Yeah, when you go back and look at that, Regina, I want you to think about what I told you when I said pray for him. You see, okay. because what happened with Job's three friends is they thought, wait a minute, if all this happening to you, Job, you must be sinning against God. Because in their mindset, the only way you could have bad things to happen is if you was living against God. Well, God said, you told a lie to my servant about me. You, 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 that's not, that's not it. You didn't tell him the truth. See, what you spoke wasn't prophecy. What you spoke to my servant Job. Because Job ain't done nothing wrong. Now what I want you to do is go get them goats and go get them rams and go put up a sacrifice for you violating, speaking something over him that was not true of my character. And so when Job pray for you, I'm going to restore him. For your foolishness, I'm going to restore him. So Job prayed for his friends that was talking bad and crazy about him sinning and being against God and everything else. And God gave him double for his trouble. You see, sometimes your blessing of restoration is in your release of your struggle. Amen. See, we struggle with people. Make me cry. No, no, no. I want you. I want. I just. I just want you to know. I'm connected. I'm. Con I'm connected to understand that. Listen. Sometimes things are for you at the mm -hmm. moment that is for you. See, Amen. we struggle with people. Amen. We struggle with situations. We struggle with with the unknown. That's what we struggle with. But what God is trying to get us to understand, if you just release that struggle and, mm -hmm. and, and obtain and grab me, I can bring you to easy street. I can bring you to understand how you see I'm providing for you. I'm providing for you when you don't know. Let me give you an example. I remember where uh, 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 I thought restoration meant that God had to tangibly give me something. Watch this. I'm about to help somebody. I thought that restoration was God tangibly giving me something, right? I got a bill due, and I ain't got the money for a bill, right? So I thought the restoration was God was going to give me the money. Mm -hmm. Because that's the way I see it. The only mm -hmm. way it's going to be restored in my mind is to pay these people. But, did, but what I didn't realize was that the blessing of the money coming was months down the road, right? But what he was going to do was he was going to hold back the devour of me even owing the people. Mm -hmm. so, what he, so, so his restoration was, I'm going to give you rest and peace in the midst of me. I'm going to trick the hearts of these people so that they're going to give you six months. Oh. <laughs> they're going to give you six months. And now because they're going to give you six months, guess what? You can now breathe. Now tomorrow is even better because what you were sweating about, what you were sweating about for the last two weeks, God moved it out the way, even though you didn't tangibly get anything, you spiritually got everything. See, I need you to understand that God is a spirit and he doesn't always do things in a tangible manner. He has the power to do it greater than what we can see in the physical. So mm -hmm. what I'm trying to say, see, my, my gift, one of my gifts is knowledge. 
And so what I dig into is I dig into the understanding and the connecting of God's word into how it really looks and plays out in life. I didn't know that. But I've been a student of the Bible since I came to it. I became a student very early, like right off the right off the bench. I, I just wanted to learn what God had to say for me. And what I discovered was what God was saying for me. He didn't have no respect to person. So he was saying it through me. And so then he gave me a radio show to talk to nine million people five days a week. And, and I got to connect to some people all over the country, all over the world. And, 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 and all I did was get up and trust God that he would bless my mouth, that I would be able to put something in the hearts of his people, that they would understand that God is still God. No matter what the world tries to make it appear like, he is still all powerful. He's still all knowing. But most of all, he is the most high and he will bless you even when you don't deserve it so you can't look uh -huh. at your mistakes and your sins and your shortcomings and your falls you can't look at those things and say well i guess it ain't happening for me because i cussed them folks out well you shouldn't have cussed them folks out <laughs> and in your heart the only reason you did do it because you felt they deserved it <laughs> but again we're going to go past that and say, Lord, I'm going to repent of me cussing them folks out. Please give me the strength to change my mouth and fix this thing here because they didn't deserve it because they're a child of yours as well. And I know you can give a more powerful chastisement than my foul words. See, those are what I'm speaking of. Um, so when you talk about prophecy, uh, I need Felicia and I need Regina to, as of this day, uh, do not allow yourself to be silenced. I, I want you to write down this, Regina and, and Felicia. I want you to write, I want all y'all to write this down. Uh, uh, any, I will not be silenced. I will not be silenced. Underline it, circle it, do whatever you want to do, write it in crayons. <laughs> but what I want you to understand is you cannot be silent. What I mean by this, take very close picture of this. I'm not talking about being outspoken. I'm talking about being committed to boldness in Christ Jesus. I'm talking about speaking the word. If you don't know the word, reach out. What word do I need to speak and translate this feeling, this emotion, this thought? What is it that God says for me? You got Google today. Go Google it. What what thoughts do I have to say about uh, 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 being powerful, being strong? What does the word say? And speak that scripture into a thing. Okay? Build your kids. Build your kids even when your kids ain't around. Even if your kids is grown. Build them. Pray for them. Don't worry about their shortcomings. Stop pointing the finger at them. And when you point the finger at them, it, 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 you don't get to see the four fingers pointing back at you. Yeah, it, does, it doesn't make you bad. What God is saying is I want you to focus on yourself. I want you to focus on you and me. We have a personal relationship. These spiritual gifts are to be used and executed. If you bury them, they will be taken away. If you don't execute them, they will be removed. You see, when the Holy Spirit distributes, he distributes according to what you're prepared and what you're able to execute. So we have to get into execution of these gifts. Amen. Mm -hmm. Donnie, Donnie, what was yours again? Um, wait a minute. Uh, you, you got it close by, D? Yeah, for Donnie, I'll have to go scroll, scroll back through. Okay. I can get it though. I got. Okay. I got it. Okay, what you got? So, okay. Hey, Juanita, how you doing? I'm good. All is well. Hey. All righty. All righty. You can you can open your Bible to uh, First Corinthians chapter twelve, and you can park it right there. Um, okay. So uh, that's 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 where we that's where we get ready to dance at. So. Um, okay. And whatever you miss, Mine whatever says you miss, you. You can go back to the um, recording and catch what you missed. Go ahead, Donnie. Okay. It's um, apostleship, evangelism, and leadership. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Look at that there. Look at that there. Look at that there. Now, now, what I want Donnie to look at is, is, is all I want you to do is look at that smile on Regina's face. That's what I want you to yeah. do. Hey, Amen. That's, <laughs> that, that, that's, 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 that's your confirmation of evangelism. 
<laughs> yeah, that that that's your that's your confirmation mm -hmm. of leadership. Yeah. You understand? This is what I'm talking about. You you understand? See, God put this right here for us, and He got a special group that He do these mm -hmm. things for. And don't worry, who missed it? It's okay, because what God has is right here. There it is, right there. That's leadership. And that's also apostleship because the building of the church that God put inside of Regina is starting to have its walls to come up off its foundations because you saw it not robbery to just share the gospel. And you shared it in a way that was acceptable and not overwhelming. Mm -hmm. You see that? So when you reached out and you said, hey, check out this prayer line, she said, I'm in. She ain't miss she she ain't miss it when the door is open. She there. Yeah, I was running. I was running. Try to tell you. Yeah, yeah. 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 Early in the morning. Good morning, Pastor. Good morning, yeah. everybody. She she in. She yeah. in. Let me tell you something. Yeah. That's because the fire of God is Amen. Yeah. And what I'm trying to tell each and every last one of y'all is trust God. Trust mm -hmm. God in what He gave you and who He made mm -hmm. you. And and don't be afraid to realize you got to relearn yourself. Mm -hmm. Do you think I had in any thoughts of one to thirty five that God was going to have me pastoring anything of His nature? What? What? Yeah, I'm a I'm a Christmas baby. That's about it. That's about that's about as close to Christ as I am. Was uh, yeah, me, me and him share some time together. But I tell you, when He called me, I answered. Amen. Because my life was happening in such a way that I didn't understand why he was calling. But I knew it was him calling. I got up. I was living in Baltimore, Maryland. My mother was living down in Gallatin Street in Northeast. About an hour drive. God woke me up one morning about 5 o'clock in the morning. Told me, go to my mama's house. I just got up, got in the car, and all the way from Baltimore to D.C., I was crying. I didn't know what's going on. Wasn't nothing wrong with me. I ain't had no problem. I'm cool. I get all the way down there. And I said, I asked her, I said, what time you go to church? She said, oh, I leave out about 6.30. I said, okay, well, I'm downstairs. She said, you going to church? And you got to hear the tone of voice she gave me. <laughs> you going to church? Let me tell you what she said. She said, I'm coming down now. <laughs> She came, she said, you go to church, I'm coming down right now. Make sure you don't change your mind. Nothing, I'm coming down. So she came down, we went to church, and uh, at the end of the service, first day, I never walked in this church before, I didn't know nobody, my mother didn't know nobody. Uh, I walked in this church, and the pastor said, I'm looking for two people. And he got to looking around, and I said in my spirit, I know he ain't talking about me. That's what I said. I don't know, where, I know he ain't talking about me. I'm, I'm this church packed. Why would I be thinking he talking about me? But sure enough, he took two steps. He said, oh, there you go, right there. Can you step on out in the aisleway? So I looked at my mama like, I know you ain't set me up. <laughs> but then I had to remember, she ain't know I was coming to church. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I, I use this as a testimony on how God talks to us individually. Mm -hmm. And so here go this pastor who pulls me out in this audience. And I promise you, from that day forward was my growth in Beulah Baptist Church. Mm. I can walk in, I, I, I truly, and I say this humbly, I can go in Beulah Baptist Church. If the doors was open today, I, I truly believe I can walk in Beulah Baptist Church and, they, and, and I feel like I'm the pastor. I got that much love from people in the church on just my service. You understand? Mm. Not giving, not, not just my service. I love to love better than I ever did in my life because I learned how much love God had for me and it transformed me. It transformed me in a crazy way and to be able to do what I'm doing today man, where was I at all them years ago? Amen. So what I'm telling you that you are special in the kingdom of God. Regina, Donnie, Deirdre, Felicia, mm -hmm. Juanita, you are special but let me tell you something. If you don't execute the special components that he gave you, Amen. they can be removed. They can be removed. Juanita, what was your spiritual gifts? You call me? 
Yeah, one, uh, one eater. Uh, Oh, I walked away from it. I'm just coming back. Prophecy, apostleship, and evangelism. It is. Ooh. It is. See, see the mirror lining up. It's just a mirror here. Mm -hmm. So when we look at when we look at First Corinthians chapter twelve, it says now about the gifts of the Spirit. Verse one it says, "Brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed." What I say to you? What I say to you, Regina? He doesn't want you to be uninformed. He wants you to know that your prayers are heard. So yeah. he'll give you confirmation through your brother, through your sister. He'll give you confirmation that he hears you. He wants to make your, your, your crooked way straight, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that tells you that's what he's doing already. So all you need to do is keep on the straight and narrow. Don't let the enemy get you on the broad way. Don't let him get you to gossiping about what you think it is or what you think it look like. Don't let mm -hmm. don't, don't get caught up in that. He said, I don't want to leave you uninformed. It says, you know that when you were pagans, when you were regular folks, when you was out there mm -hmm. doing what everybody else was doing, he said, somehow or <laughs> other, you were influenced and led astray to, to, to mm -hmm. mute idols. idols. Yeah, now let me tell you something. You know, people can be idols. Yeah, your mm -hmm. husband, your boyfriend, your kids, uh, uh, your grandkids. Uh, money can be an idol. Your car can be an idol. Where you live, the furniture in your house can be an idol. Uh, uh, your dishes in your cabinet can be an idol. My point is, anything that you put before God, mm -hmm. anything that you put before God can now become your God. Mm -hmm. That's Good true. or bad. So be careful in what we give attention to that we put before God. He said, he said that you, you was led astray. Watch this. It said you was led. Mm -hmm. You was led astray. It didn't say mm -hmm. you made a choice to just go do it. Somebody right. convinced you it was okay to do. Watch mm -hmm. the company you keep. Right. Watch the company you keep. I tell, I tell, I tell my youngster uh, 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 Paris all the time to, you know, separate from what it looks like in the world so that you can get that opening for you to see what it really can be for your world. Do you know all of us got a world? God gave us the ability to have a world and we will find that it connects to the people that we're around. It all connects. He said he says so so he said uh, he says therefore watch this verse 3 says therefore I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the spirit of God says Jesus is cursed and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit oh man y'all 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 know boy y'all ought to know something right there you can't say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit verse 4 says there are different kinds of gifts but the same spirit distributes them. Mm. Did you catch that? Mm -hmm. There's many gifts, but the same spirit mm -hmm. distributes them. That means if you really look at the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the, the Holy Son. Spirit. Mm -hmm. So he's the distributor of these spiritual gifts. It says there are different kinds of service, but of the same Lord. <laughs> Isn't that something that the services are to the Lord, right? Why? Because Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, he served. He served us. So when you look at that, it's a diff different kinds uh, of service, but the same Lord. It says there are different kinds of workings, but in all of them and in every one, it is the same God at work. Did you see that twist up? Lord and God. The workings connects to God. The service connects to Jesus. It says, now to each one, the manifestation of the spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the spirit a message of wisdom. To another one, a message of knowledge by means of the same spirit to another faith by the same spirit and another gift of healing by that one spirit to another miraculous powers to another prophecy to another distinguishing between spirits that's discerning where something is 
where a person is, what they're operating out of. People can see people ain't operating out of the right spirit. That there's people that can distinguish spirits. Uh, mm -hmm. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. And to still another, the interpretation of tongues. Now, let me say this. Let me say this, and I'm going to get this out real early and real quick. Uh, there's very clear uh, teaching on uh, the tongues. I'm going to say this. The Bible is very clear to say, I'd rather you speak in regular language than in tongues in worship service because it's confusing to those who don't know. Okay. Mm -hmm. When there is a presence of tongues, there's a presence of an interpreter. Mm -hmm. Okay. There, because God does not confusion. He does not. Okay. So I want I want to put that out in the atmosphere because I always say pray for those uh, that have the gift of tongues to be connected to those who interpret them. That that's always my prayer um, for them. Uh, Next verse says, all these are the works of one and the same spirit, and he distributes them to each one just as he determines. Now, one thing that was going on in the church of Corinth was there was a separation and division that was going on in that church. There was people that were very uh, spiritually gifted and they had a lot of outs with each other. They were they were very separated from each other. They, there was there was some that was unified over here with these cliques and then there was some unified over here. But as a whole, the church had division going on. And the problem with the spiritual gifts is that if they're not combined and working as one mechanism, then the body is stretched out. He said there's many members but there's only one body what can the hand do without a finger right we all have a job to do no matter how big or how small and that's what God is putting together in this body of Christ that we're operating in right now what he's doing is he's taking people who have been connecting to him in a relationship manner and he's building an, 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 a branch of Zion within us and we will operate in that branch of Zion to be available to facilitate those who are lost and those who don't know Christ but we're going to do it from three key topics one is our spiritual gifts two is our level of faithfulness and three is from our place of understanding that we can't do nothing without God. And in order to worship him, we must worship him in spirit and truth. We will be worshipers. And when I say worshipers, what I'm saying is devotion time. Uh, how's, your, how's your prayer closet going, uh, 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 Sister Felicia? It's coming along. It's, it's building. I'm building. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. See what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because the Bible will tell you, go in your closet and close the door. You see, so that means at some potential at, at some particular point, we should all have a prayer closet mm -hmm. that's growing, that, mm -hmm. that that's being built because God instructs us to go into our closet and close the door. Jesus said what we do in that closet in secret, God will manifest it in public. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So so that closet is very important uh, to what God is 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 mandating for his children His mm -hmm. operating what I call his operating soldiers. Amen. And soldiers can be women or men. And let me tell you something, I see more soldier women than I do men uh, in the body of Christ. And I'm, I'm praying hard that uh, we be a different body of, of, of Christ, a, a different body of Zion in the body of Christ, that we would have men that would go forth, come forth and stand uh, and, and, and get on the battlefield. Uh, we have a few here. Um, uh, we got some great ones here and we're trying to multiply that Kenny and Levi and myself and Paris and Wayne and uh, uh, Newton uh, we have some here but we want as many of, of, of y'all soldierette women we I want I want two men yeah that's what I want I want to see us grow strong in Christ is there any questions so far I want no. I want to make sure that we that we don't just run over through nothing. This is a time for us to impact uh, what the Word of God is saying. Uh, Regina, is there any questions? Okay, D. Um, this is an update. Um, Levi's on the way. He would have been here, but he's on his way to work right now. And Crystal's out running errands. 
Okay. Yeah, that's just update for them. We'll just, we'll just, we'll just send them back. They can they can get it on the um they can get the replay on on the YouTube once it's done. I'm gonna upload it. So okay, and the Wayne will check in and um the Wayne okay. will check in soon. Okay, sounds good. Sounds good. Regina, any questions? No. You sure? Positive. Donnie, you got anything? No, I'm good. Okay. Uh Felicia. I'm good. Okay. Oh, hey Teresa. <laughs> okay, I see. I, I see you muted. I see you. I see. Hey, Larissa. I see her here. name. I was. Yeah, mm -hmm. I see her name. Okay, mm -hmm. I didn't know y'all was y'all was double duo. And uh, okay, y'all gotta let me know now. Don't catch me off guard like that. I need to know. Okay. All right. All right. That's fine. Um, y'all got any questions? Y'all got any questions so far? Uh, Felicia, you good? Juanita, you good? Yes, I'm good. Okay. All right. So as as we continue to as we continue to dive in um, to First Corinthians uh, chapter twelve, um, so we going over to verse twelve where it tells us, "Just as the body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ." It is with Christ, for we were all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentile, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but many. Now, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. I want y'all to connect this to your gifts at this point. I want you to understand if, you, if, if, if your gift is giving, it, it, it doesn't mean that it doesn't connect to prophecy. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that it doesn't connect to leadership. It doesn't mean it doesn't connect to uh, administration. Everybody got a part to play in the body of Christ. And in order for us to service God's people, it's up to us to unite these gifts and move as one. You remember the Transformers? Mm -hmm. they, they, they was one car. And mm -hmm. then, that joke, then that joke out of nowhere just broke out to be 19 parts and six feet tall. And, and that's the body of Christ. You see, we move as one unit. And we might be as small as a Volkswagen Beetle. But when that joker get to transforming and turning into Bumblebee, that thing get... Ten times large and, and a, and a hundredfold stronger. That's the image of the body of Christ. That's who we have to be on the front line in our relationships, in our workplace. Let me tell you something. A lot of people miss that you're supposed to live by the principles of God at your job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is it the actual self? Is your spiritual gifts actually working at your job, or 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 or, or are you allowing? The, uh, uh, the job and the attitudes around you at the job to smother your gifts not to be used. Nope. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. I commend you. I commend <laughs> you. Because I tell you, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. It was, it, was, it was the love of a talent and an ability because one of, one, of, one of the blessings of Donnie is uh, uh, she feed people. Yeah. It's a blessing. It's, it's, it's got a other part of it as a curse when you when you keep eating because it add on and don't leave. You, know? <laughs> you, start getting, you start getting two of things. You know what I mean? Uh, two of them, stomachs and you know, yeah. <laughs> but but she bless you through yeah. her feeding, right? Mm -hmm. It's the same thing that Teresa do. She bless you through her feeding. Same thing that 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 Felicia do. She bless you through her feeding, right? Mm -hmm. And so in these in these processes, understand how many churches in the old day used to have kitchen after church every Sunday? Mm -hmm. Where you see that at in 2022? Nowhere. 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 Mm -hmm. Because the church has lost its way in Christ's agenda. Mm -hmm. Christ has an agenda. Be my sheep. Take care of the lame. Mm -hmm. Go out there and take care of the less fortunate. That's a mandate, right? And how it works is the gifts work together. Mm -hmm. It all works together for the good of those that love the love Lord. The Lord. Mm -hmm. It's an external 
expression mm -hmm. when the gifts come together to exalt outside. Mm -hmm. I was I was I was brought something uh the other day that it we ain't far from going out and and, and doing some outreach that yeah. we need to reach some people. Mm -hmm. You know, rather that you know the Jehovah Witness, that's what I say about them. Man, they might got their doctrine wrong, but they sure got their street walk strong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, they got this they knock on your door early in the morning with no regard. Hello? Nine o'clock. You got 20 cent? I got a watchtower for you. 20 cent. 20 cent. I need two dimes. That's all I need. I never understood what them two dimes was for. But they always can't. Sometimes I just give them 20 cent. If you don't get away from my dough, man, take this 20. Here go a quarter. Go on about yourself now. Go on. But what I didn't, what I didn't understand, what, what I come to realize is one of their mandates that they operated off of was the mandate of disseminating in public their outside mission to go out and preach the gospel. That's what they were doing. They were taking that mandate literally mm -hmm. and they go out. Think about it. The Mormons, House of Latter-day Saints. How many of them boys you seen with white shirts and tight slacks on on a bicycle in the hood? And all they had to do was catch you leaning somewhere and they was on you. <laughs> hey, I want, to, I want to talk to you about Jesus. Mm -hmm. But what you missed was they knew how to use the keywords, but it wasn't until you got the understanding of their belief where you found, oh, this is a disconnect. Y'all don't believe, y'all don't believe that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. Okay, then what did he die for? You see what I'm saying? So you know, you got to get into the understanding like Jehovah. Uh, uh, when the Bible says that, that his name is Jehovah, Jehovah Witness run with, that's it. His name Jehovah. They're a witness of Jehovah. They believe there's only 424 um, uh, seats available in heaven and they're already taken. So where we going? And where you going? If, that, if that's true, where you going at? So why are we here? What are we doing this for if all of us going to hell? If all the yeah. heaven seats is gone? See, that's yeah. what I'm talking about. You got you to gotta get into that understanding. And the thing about it is, we're not to fight them. We're to pray for them to bring them to Christ. You've just been misled. You know, we had a driver one time, and, and he was raised Jehovah Witness till he met us. And it wasn't through something that we knew he was paying attention to our life. But people will be watching you. I call it, uh, I learned about something. It's called your life in a fishbowl. Are you ready? You ready to be the fish? Yeah, because when you say that you're a child of the most high God and you put yourself in a place to grow with him, your life in a fishbowl. Your kid's life in a fishbowl. Yeah, everything you do in a fishbowl. Somebody looking at being able to point at you and say you ain't doing this the way that the Bible say you're supposed to do it. But see, this is a place to be blessed. This is a place to say, you know what? I serve God in my weakest moment. Now, I want you to remember when you come talking to me about my faults. Did you know that Noah was an alcoholic? Talk about it. Yeah. Did you know that 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 Abraham was an adulterer? Talk about it. Yeah. So was David. Talk about it. Did you know Samson was a fornicator? Yeah, okay, so what am I getting at? I'm getting at understanding that God used the sinful to do mm -hmm. his greatest work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I thank God for me being sinful and still being chosen. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, you, 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 you're, you're more than a conqueror. And I want to tell you that your gifts will make room for you. Amen. 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 I, want, I want to skip down to verse 21. Chapter 12, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 21. It says, the eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. <laughs> Apostleship can't tell prophecy, I don't need you. Yeah. Giving can't tell faith, I don't need you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, the eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the, ha and the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special 
modesty, while others, presentable parts, need no special treatment, but God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lack it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. So prophecy, apostleship, administration, teaching, learning, uh, 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 um, giving, faith, uh, knowledge, wisdom, healing, they should all have connection and respect for mm -hmm. one another. We're talking about people. It's being given as body parts, but we're talking about people. I asked a question a few weeks ago about the voice of God. Mm. And I had some people that said that they didn't know how they knew the voice of God. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was a very interesting thing to come around and I'm going to close out our Bible study tonight on the voice of God. I need you to know the characteristics of God. One thing about God is he meets you where you at, but he's still God. So in your notes, part one, hearing the voice of God. Number one, it's a small, still voice small, still voice. In parentheses, you can put whisper-like. It's seductive. Yeah, it's intimate. And it connects with your deepest sensitivity. Now, let me give you an example. Uh, all y'all ladies, y'all know uh, Barry White, Lou <laughs> Rawls, and, 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 you know, Billy D. Williams, and, you know, a uh, couple of them, one, Earl, James Earl Jones. You know, all of them had this voice that would penetrate your deepest thought process of how that voice was working for you. That's how they became who they became. Their voice was impeccable, right? But I want you to know that that's an image that you should connect with, with God. And I'm not talking about the base and the deepness. What I'm talking about is the intimacy of it. See, God is not going to yell at you. He's not going to grab human form for any reason. He's still God. So when he says, stop. And you know you heard it. You're like, ooh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you start looking around like, who in here? Yeah, it's God. Yeah, stop. Now, when you hear stop, look at what's going on around you in the physical now, right? Because I want you to take this first definition. We're going to break this down to 10 steps. This is just the first one. You're going to practice because God going to give you opportunity to connect and say, oh, yeah, I know goodness well I heard the voice of God because this happened. This, because, because this would have happened had I not did this. Because we'll say the word something. Matter of fact, put underneath of that step one, replace the word something told me with God told me. When it's positive. Better put that in there. Somebody say, God told me to go get my gun and fix this problem. No, God didn't tell you that. <laughs> that. That wasn't him. Yeah, yeah. It's always going to be positive. And it's always going to line up with his word and character. Mm -hmm. Always. always. That, that's a very important step of, of, of hearing and recognizing the voice of God. It's a small, still voice. It's intimate. It, it, it touches your deepest point of sensitivity. And, and because you're, you're, you're aware of it, because it's not me sitting next to you and talking to you. So it's not mm -hmm. a human voice, but it is audibly spoken to you to say, stop, go, come. See, he, 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 doesn't, he doesn't do all of these paragraphs. Oh, God told me and somebody rattled it for 30 minutes. 
when you know God ain't sat there for 30 minutes and gave you nothing like that, because he going to he going to shorthand everything he gives because he can shorthand because the spirit that dwells in you is going to complete the shorthand. See, God ain't going to sit there and give you 30 minutes because if he got to do that, then he might walk on over there and talk to them himself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, he using you to come through in shorthand for you to now feel the spirit and take it from there. Right. So at the end of the day, it's like this little traffic we was in right here. Uh, he probably was trying to get my attention when Paris was telling me that something was going on and, 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 and going elsewhere. But you know what? I'm good because that made sure my signal get me to the end. See, I'm, I'm, I'm good with it. I, I, I take the good with the bad. But hearing the voice of God, replace that something told me. The next time you can really say something told me, catch yourself. Mm -hmm. Because the only reason you saying something told me is because you either listened or you didn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Most yeah. likely you didn't. Because mm -hmm. something told me I should have took that left hand turn. Now I'm late for work. I might lose my job. Because it's my 15th time being late and I ain't got no more excuses. And this traffic was real today. Yeah. The traffic was real today. But it ain't going to look real because I've been late 15 times this month. Mm -hmm. yeah. This month, only 30 days in the month. Right. I'll catch what I'm saying. Uh, is there is there any questions? Is here I, I like to keep you on your toes. Is there any questions? Um, I want to hear from Teresa. Uh, yeah, I, I got to hear from you. Um, yeah, yeah, because um, you you when you hear when you show up, uh, this is an interactive thing here. Um, I got to hear from you because I see a lot of uh, I see a lot of process that you are chasing. Um, in the kingdom of God, and I want to be a part of that facilitation of that occurring. So um, I definitely want to hear from you. What was Teresa's? Uh, what was Teresa's gifts? And what was Larissa's gifts? I think Larissa was prophecy, apostleship. Okay, she coming back in. She to come back in. Phone acting crazy. Okay. I think hers was knowledge as well. Knowledge. Okay, there you go. Okay. There I am. Okay. We had to fix it. We had to fix it. It's okay. It's okay. Um. Uh. So what I was saying to you is, uh, I see you. I see you running. Uh, running rapidly towards God and, and, and what I wanted to put in your spirit and your space is I want to be a part of facilitating uh, that relationship that you desire building with God. You were one of the responses on hearing the voice of God um, and connecting to that. Um, I take I take small things very serious for me uh, mm -hmm. because I believe I believe that my service uh, to those who God entrusts me with, those that I'm, I'm able to connect with, that my job is to bring simplicity to your relationship building with God. Mm -hmm. And one of the things is uh, I want to set up uh, a time for you and D to have uh, a Bible study time um, to start off because mm -hmm. I want to make sure that we don't just jump off the curb and start doing things and in, in, at a, such a pace that it's, it's, it's bigger than you can chew, right? And, and yeah. that's, that's, that's I, cause I don't wanna do that. Um, I try to do everything in simplicity, uh, but still I need you to raise your hand and say, hey, I don't, I don't, I, I don't get that or I, I, I need to know more about that because, right. and that's for everybody. That's not, that's, that's not, I'm not pointing at Teresa. That's for everybody right. because God's word mm -hmm. in this time is the most understood thing that could change this entire world that we live in if yeah. people would live it right who say that they believe in it if people would yeah. understand what it's saying to them and stop creating their own agendas and yeah. if people would submit to the instructions of god Amen. Yeah. Amen. we're living a better we're living a yeah, better world true. and so what so what i want to do what i want to commission uh, us on our Bible studies is us learning how to turn the word into flesh. Oh. If we can leave, if we can leave every Bible study with something we can add to our life, I'm satisfied. Mm. And, I'm, and I'm not talking about memorizing those scriptures that's 90, no. 90 verses long. I'm not talking about that. What I'm talking about is something 
that we can put into action that would actually change not only us from the inside, but everybody around us that mm-hmm. come into our contact. That's what I would like to do. So tonight, um, the exercise of, <clears throat> of, of application is this. Everybody ready? Mm-hmm. Hello. We are to do two things. One, uh, we are to find 10 people 10 people, to tell them to have a blessed day tomorrow. I know that seems simple. Watch how hard hard, hard, hard that is. I promise you. Tell 10 people, now hold on, uh, hold on, there's a a piece. Tell 10 people, have a blessed day tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Right? And I Mm -hmm. want you to remind them that no matter what it looks like, mm-hmm. you're still blessed. Mm-hmm. That's 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 the giving message for tomorrow for 10 people. Have a blessed day. And behind that have a blessed day, you're telling them, no matter what it looks like, no matter what it looks blessed. like, you, you are, are still blessed. blessed. Right. Because did you notice that came behind have a blessed day? Yeah. And the reason why that is given to us to do it that way is because here's the impartation of God. Here's the, the impartation came afterwards. You say, have a blessed day. But then you say, no matter what it looks like, oh, they're like, wait a minute, after the blessed day, that's supposed to be it. I get that all the time. Mm-hmm. But no, the impartation of God is, wow, no matter what it looks like, that means no matter what you're going through, mm-hmm. no matter what they say about you, no matter mm-hmm. what you're worried about, no matter what you're thinking about, no matter what it looks like, you still blessed. Yeah. That's the impartation of God. Amen. 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 That's that's number one. Now number two is tomorrow's scripture. Whatever tomorrow's daily scripture is, you're gonna break it down word for word. You're gonna get the biblical definition for each and every word of that scripture tomorrow. Outside of those, that, you know, as basic is and the, you know, outside of those. And you're going to compare it to two translations. So you're going to use the King James. So tomorrow, I'm going to help you out because I'm going to post the same scripture in two translations. You guys are the only one that's going to know what's going on because everybody else is going to say, what's this two translation thing today? (laughs) It wasn't that Bible study today. They're going to miss it. We're going to help them out. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to give it in two translations. One translation is going to be the King James, and one translation is going to be simplified. So it's just like ABC, okay? Mm-hmm. Like the NIV or the message or the amplified. But I want you to see the comparison of the words mm-hmm. in that scripture. And I want you to break it down, whether when you get off of work, whatever, before you go to bed tomorrow, break that word down. Go to Google and look it up. What's the biblical definition of this word? What's the biblical (laughs) definition of this word? What's the biblical definition of this word? And watch how that word come to life. After you you read it, as you would normally read it. Mm -hmm. Those are our two assignments for tomorrow. Okay? Mm -hmm. And we'll, we'll discuss it somewhere along the week or we'll discuss it at the next Bible study. Whatever the case, if anybody runs into any complication, please put it in the group. I will see it. I'm always in it. I'm looking at everything. I'm loving everything. I love each and every last one of y'all, but that is what I want uh, our two assignments to be for tomorrow, okay? Okay. Uh, Have a blessed day, and no matter what it looks like, you're still blessed. You're still blessed. Amen. And I know y'all right now feel the power in that being spoken. So you already, you already know what he gave us to do tomorrow, right? So that means 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, about 100 people going to get blessed tomorrow unconditionally. So we're going to find them 10. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Somebody going to leave and say, boy, God is something else because I don't even know her. I don't know her. <laughs> she to tell me. Yeah, I, I received. Yeah, thank you for that. Because I was praying for that. And, and, and I guarantee you, somebody going to have a testimony out of them 10. Somewhere, some going to come back. Y'all going to strike us. Y'all going to strike somebody's heart. Listen, let us go into prayer. Um, Let us close out. Um, Listen, I recorded everything. So whatever you missed, uh, it's going to be on record. I'm going to post it to our YouTube channel. I'll post the YouTube channel information back in the group. 
so that you can um so you can get what you missed. Amen. Let us go to the throne of grace. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus, Lord. We thank you for who you are, Lord. We thank you for this Bible study. Thank you for all that you do, Lord, what you show us, your reverence. God, you're just so committed to us, Lord, even in the times that we find ourselves to be led astray. Lord, we thank you for your word, Lord. We thank you for the gifts that you've blessed us with, that you've let the Holy Spirit distribute in each and every last one of us. God, I ask you right now that you would bless your people right now, Lord, under the sound of my voice, that you would illuminate their gifts, Lord, and let them continue to be a blessing into the kingdom of God. Let them go out into this lost world and just tell them about this living God that will save them from all of these unrighteous things of this world, Lord. You, your yep. son, Jesus Christ, that you gave up, just your only begotten son, you gave him up, oh God, so that he would die on Calvary Cross to save us. So God, we thank you in the name of Jesus, Lord. I'm yeah. thanking you for this, the consistency and the faithfulness of your people, Lord. So if you would bless and lift right now in the name of Jesus, and I you right now, Lord, we send a, a special petition that you would cover our sister Regina right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. Give her the power from the bottom of her feet, Lord, over to the top of her head, Lord. Put her crown of her queenship on her. Touch her right now, Lord, and let her walk with her head up and walk into her situation as a winner. She was born in the name of Jesus. You lifted her up in the name of Jesus. You yes, Lord God. created her to be more yes, Lord. than a conqueror. She wonderfully made royal priesthood. Yes, She's a chosen generation. Mm -hmm. So God, we speak yeah. into her life right now, Lord, in yes, the name of Jesus, Jesus, that you will not leave her begging for bread, that you yes, will give her what God. she's standing in need of. Yes, bless yes, her Lord. children. Bless her house coming in. Yes, bless her yes, house going yes, out. Yes, God, you, in God. the name of Jesus, yes, we extend Lord. our hands unto heaven to say thank you, Lord, that yes, you've done it already, you, knowing Lord. that you'll do it again. You think you did yesterday, Lord, you'll do it today. The thing you did for the next one, you will do it for us. So, God, yes, we Lord. decree and declare you to be God. I'm asking yes, you to bless right now, Lord. Yes, continue right now, to cover Lord. us, keep us, and hold yes, us. Lord. In your precious son, Jesus Amen. Christ's name, we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank Hallelujah. Thank Hallelujah. Thank Lift them up. Thank Lift them up. Thank yeah. Thank and you, let me say to y'all. Thank you, Thank you, Lord. This is a standing seven o'clock Bible study every Tuesday. Um, I'm going the next link that I put out will be the forever link. All you got to do is hit it on Tuesday, save it on your phone, do whatever you got to do. Um, when you miss it, know the YouTube channel, go get it on replay. But I'm telling you, God is watching your faithfulness. And I'm going to tell you, like you tell the rest of the world tomorrow, have a blessed day. And no matter what have it looks like. Day. Right. You feel that. Bless. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I love y'all. Until next time. Um, love you. Y'all keep on. Love, love you too. Y'all be blessed. All okay. right. Okay. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. All righty. I can't